Hey guys, welcome back to Feeling is Healing. And today I'm talking about how I'm doing one year and a half after having stopped Zoloft. So I'd originally got on Zoloft a few years ago now. I was on and off for, for two years. I uh, had a four month break within those two years and then went back on them again. And as of the moment, not quite, but almost a year and a half I've been off them. And I'm very grateful for the fact they helped. At the time, I definitely needed them. I definitely needed something uh, to quiet the noise in my mind and the, uh, take the edge off the intensity of the physical sensations um, of anxiety. However, I felt the time had come for me to try li living without them. And I stopped cold turkey. And how has it been being off them? Well, it, at the beginning especially, it was, it was really challenging. Those first few months, just feeling emotions so much more intensely than I had been feeling them before. In an adrenalized state a lot of the time. It was honestly quite wild. I was running around feeling, <laughs> feeling wild, almost manic at points. And really just feeling everything more intensely. Uh, you know, grief, shame, um, sadness, but also uh, joy, um, empathy, love. It was like everything was intensified. Another interesting change was after I came off Zoloft, I noticed that I was a bit less angry than I was before. Uh, before whilst I was taking Zoloft, they would give me little bits of rage here and there. Um, and I, I remember feeling angry quite, quite a bit of the time and I didn't see it as a bad thing because prior to being on Zoloft, I was someone that was very disconnected from my anger. So the Zoloft gave me a bit of anger and I just kind of used it to my advantage. I said, I said, okay, let me use this anger to set boundaries and speak my truth more things, which I was trying to do anyway that I felt were healthy for me. I was able to use anger as a bit of a crutch, right? You feel less fear. If you're more angry, you're not going to feel fear as much. So that helped me. Uh, so being off of them, that took away that crutch. Uh, it's not that I never got angry. It was more that anger had helped me. It had helped give me a bit of courage and also it helped ground me somewhat, which was interesting. Um, so that was taken away and, and that was a challenge. And around the six to seven month point of having stopped Zoloft, I was passing through a difficult time. Uh, it, with my living situation, there was a lot of conflict and tension. And yeah, it, it was quite overwhelming. And I was super adrenalized. I uh, just had like loads of energy, trying to like burn it off, exercising and stuff like that. Um, and what happened was once the housing situation was resolved, I, my body, I had kind of a crash and I'm not saying that this will happen to everyone because I have my own health issues linked with fatigue, but I, I had a bit of a crash and it went to show that in my case kind of shows like, Hey, there can be repercussions, you know, there could be consequences to coming off of this drug right um especially as i did it it was cold turkey <laughs> um you know so there, there were consequences to that and yeah it was a stressful situation but me being off of uh the medication i'm sure amplified um the level of stress perceived stress and activation of of my nervous system and yeah, so after that, my I I was really low on energy. I was really too tired to feel anxious after that. I just kind of had to rest for a while, uh, and that that wasn't a bad thing. Time to reflect and just sort of see where I was at. It was like my body was so hyper stressed, uh, hyper stimulated. It's almost like my body said to me, "Okay, no, we're stepping in. <laughs> uh, life's too much. The, the flames are too hot. We're gonna dampen them for you." Um, and that's not new for me. I've had this, uh, 
fatigue issues with fatigue for uh, nine years. So I'm not saying this is going to happen to other people, but it just does go to show that there can be consequences to coming off of these drugs, just like there's consequences being on them, right? There's benefits, there's pros and cons. Uh, each person has to weigh it up for themselves. However, I don't see it as a bad thing. Even though I had that crash and stuff, it's, it's what needed to happen. I needed to go and then uh, crash and go down, right? To, to learn, learn the lesson um, that it's okay sometimes to make the flames less hot, okay? I was using medication and now I'm using other things. I'm using trying to use healthier tools, but equally allowing myself sometimes to to have a binge. I'm allowing myself to have a weekend. I'm not being like so intense, uh, obsessively intense on my projects and being productive. It's like, no, I need balance. Uh, you know, I wanna go out and dance or um, have a day or two just binging, right? It's, it's the weekend. I allow, I don't judge others for having a beer or uh, smoking a joint at the end of the day, right? Um, I don't have to be a robot. I can take the edge off here and there whilst being mindful that I'm not diving into escapism behaviors to escape my responsibilities, right? It's about being conscious of it. Um, and, and that's what I'm working on. That's what I have worked on and it is helped. It does help. One of the turning points for me was whilst I was working on a video, looking at the effects of antidepressants, I was coming across these different studies um, and also the lack of studies for the long-term use of these drugs. There was another study which showed speaking with a therapist was just as effective as taking antidepressants in treating depression. Now, I was on antidepressants for anxiety not depression, but even so, it the data was showing that talking is just as effective as taking this drug. So it was harder to justify not seeing a therapist after that. The data was there. Um, so I did. I saw a therapist and that helped. And in general, my mindset was and still is what strategies can I into implement in my life to best ensure that I won't end up back taking these antidepressants? Not that it's a bad thing. I just prefer to be able to deal with this without having to take them. Because I could see that I had developed a, psych a sort of psychological dependence on these drugs. And with the lack of studies for long-term use, and long-term effects, I, I prefer not to be on them. Um, and also, I just prefer to have better mental health in general. So it's like these strategies that I'm looking to implement will just improve my life in general, right? One of the things was finding a therapist. On top of that, it was finding communities I can be a part of uh, to go and share how I'm doing and help others and have others help me journaling, being in nature, exercise, uh, rest. Personally, I like Reiki. And all these, all these things helped uh, massively. However, at the crux of everything, what I could see was my biggest kryptonite and the main, uh, one of the main areas that I could grow into uh, and make progress in was just learning to be able to sit with my emotions and my thoughts. And it's, it's, it's very hard just to sit still. Um, if you're someone that gets like quite strong anxiety and that has quite an active nervous system, you know, a lot of trauma, it's very hard to do. And I, I think it's hard for everyone. Uh, I think that's why we're all hyper, everyone's hyper stimulated on these different devices and apps, social media. It's, it's very hard to sit with yourself. However, I could see that for me, that's one way through it. That's one way through this thing, just being able to sit with the, sit with anxiety, sit with the thoughts that come along with it, and just be able to try and contain a, can, this safe space within me, this safe, reassuring space.
and that's what I've been working on and it's it's still hard but I'm working on it <laughs> it's a journey right it takes time it's just baby steps and it's like a spiral it's like never up like that it's like woo, woo. see you can't even tell that you are gradually going up you have to take a look back at where you were a year or two ago uh, to actually see it's like oh yeah I have made progress and to celebrate that uh, celebrate yourself for being courageous and, and doing the work and working on yourself and being kind being kind to myself for for where I'm at right now um, because it's, it's totally okay it's it's part of it it's part of being human this stuff dealing with these intense energies and self-defeating thought patterns it's it's no one's fault. It's we're a product of our experiences and our environment and the people that created those environments, they're not really to blame. You know, they had their their own environments, you know. Um, it's not that anyone's to blame. It's like, but, but we have the power to change it. We can always work on changing our level of reactivity. And that's really, after three years of doing this channel, the conclusion that I'm coming to anxiety this activated nervous system that's not the issue the issue is my reactivity to it it's like really anxiety is just a feeling it's like a you know a hyper stimulated nervous system it's like well that's okay sometimes it happens and everyone gets feels that everyone feels these sensations it's it's about not treating it like oh my god you know I'm gonna die I'm feeling anxious uh, you know, not responding to the anxiety in that way, but just softening to it, just being like, I'm feeling that, and this is exactly what I need to feel. And with, within this feeling, there's an opportunity to start retraining my brain to see like, hey, this is okay, and to just soften to it, and soften the space where it's received, and receive it with love if you can start with acceptance but if you can get some love in there um that's only gonna help right because that anxiety is is a part of you and you don't want to reject it um by rejecting it you're rejecting yourself so you accept it and you do what you need to do anyway you've we face the fears exposure therapy and gradually building our window of tolerance. That is what I'm working on. And seeing that I'm not going to be a Buddha or Dalai Lama overnight. It just takes time. It takes time. It really does. Um, and that's okay because everyone's, everyone's doing it. Everyone's in the midst of it. They might seem like they're smoother and got it all <laughs> under control. But uh, everyone's dealing with this maybe to different extents um but that's okay and do i think i'll ever go back on the antidepressants honestly at the moment i'm feeling like i won't I'm feeling like i'm grateful for how much they helped me and the extent to which they did help and i'm grateful they're there if i do need them right that they're, they're like uh this tool or thing I can take to lessen the intensity <laughs> um, if it comes to that. However, for the moment, I'm feeling like, no, I don't think I will go back to them. There are other things which do take the edge off, which don't require a daily commitment. And that is where I'll leave it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed and um, let me know down in the comments how how you guys are doing uh, with your journey, um, taking antidepressants, coming off of them. I'm always curious and always enjoy hearing how you guys are doing. So um, yeah, let me know and uh, thanks for watching. Take care.